Welcome back everybody, Gary Simmons here for the Game Institute with Lesson 50 of the Dead Earth Game Development Series. In this lesson we're going to work on the player's damage reaction sound system. There's going to be two sorts of sound that the player rig will emit while it's being attacked. The first is the actual damage that is being done to the player's body, such as its skin ripping and its bones breaking. And we're going to create an audio collection for that. But we're also going to emit a second type of sound, which is going to be the player groaning or moaning in pain, such as... Ugh! Yeah. So we're going to create an audio collection for that too, assign them both to our character manager, and then we're going to add some code to the character manager so that it knows when to emit those sounds. So we're going to create two audio collections, one called player damage, which is going to contain those damage sounds, and another one called player pain, which is going to create the player pain sounds. And if we look at our audio mixer here in the audio mixer window, which remember if you don't have up, you can go to the project view, open up the assets folder, select our audio mixer, and then make sure that you open Open up the audio mixer tab by just going to window and then selecting audio mixer like so. You're reminded that sounds that should be played for the player should be patched through the player audio mixer group which is spelt player with a capital P so we're going to need to remember that when we're creating our audio collections. Okay so let's start off by configuring the import settings of our player damage and player pain sounds. We're going to do that by going to the project view scrolling down and what we're looking for is the sounds folder there it is. If we open up the sounds folder you can see we have a folder in there called player sounds. We've got lots of sounds in there that we haven't used, but the ones we're interested for now are the damage sounds, such as this. And we also have pain sounds, such as this. Cool. So we're going to want to select all the damage sounds, first of all. Make sure that we've set them to be forced to mono, and also set their compression format to PCM. These aren't very large WAV files. We don't want compression. And then press Apply. And then we're going to do the same for the pain sounds. Select all the pain sounds, force to mono, Set the compression format to PCM and click apply. Now we want to select our audio collections folder and with our audio collections folder selected we wish to go up to the assets menu, the create sub menu and choose to create a new audio collection. I'm going to call this player damage. With my audio collections folder still selected I'm going to go up to the assets menu again, the create sub menu again and choose to create another audio collection and this time call it player pain. With player damage selected, let's first of all assign its audio group to player with a capital P. We'll configure it to be a 3D sound by moving the spatial blend all the way down to zero. And the volume is going to want to be pretty low for this because the pain sounds are, are the sounds of the skin ripping and they're also going to be getting emitted really close to the listener, which is on the character rig as well. So we don't want them to be too overbearing. So I'm just going to set the volume down to about 0.07 for now. Now a lot of these volumes seem quite low at the moment, and I'm deliberately playing it on the safe side so that if we bring stuff in that needs to be much louder, we've got plenty of headroom to play with. But of course we're going to do a pass over all of this when we're much nearer the end of this project. And if we find that all of our volumes are a little bit low, then we can just move them all up by a certain amount. But I think they're going to be fine. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to create a single clip bank. So I'm going to set the size of the clip bank to one, and then I'm going to lock the inspector, and I'm going to drill down into my player sounds folder. I'm going to select all of those damaged sounds that we just configured, and I'm going to drag and drop them over the clips label in the inspector. So we now have an audio collection called player damage containing all of our damaged sounds. I'm then going to unlock the inspector. Then I'm going to go back to my audio collections folder, and this time select our player pain audio collection. Once again, we're going to assign that to the player audio group. This time we'll move its volume down to something like, I don't know, 0.25. This needs to be quite a loud sound. It is the player screaming out in pain after all. Once again, we'll move spatial blend down to zero so it's a 3D sound. We'll create a single audio clip bank and then we'll lock the inspector, drill down into the player sounds folder, select all of those pain sounds that we've just configured, drag and drop them over the clips label in the inspector. And that's that audio collection player done as well. Now, just remember that when you're creating these audio collections and you're putting in the player group, just check that the spelling matches that of the audio mixer. Remember, it's player with a capital P. Make sure that uh, that's true when you're creating audio collections for the zombies as well. That it's a capital Z. Otherwise, you may find that your sounds aren't being played anywhere because they're being assigned to an audio group that doesn't even exist. 
So before we carry on, let's just remind ourselves how the attack system works. If we select Omni Zombie Jill, drill down into her AI Entity game object and open up her hips, you are reminded that her extremities, her hands, and her head all have damage triggers on them. Here's the mouth trigger here. And you're reminded that the AI damage trigger is the trigger that detects when it is intersecting the character rig and it applies some damage to the character rig by calling the character manager's take damage function. So we're going to need to expand the AI damage trigger a little bit so that it can now tell the character manager when to play a pain sound and when to play a damage sound. And likewise, we're also going to need to expand the parameter list slightly to our character manager's take damage function so that it can receive this information. So I think what we'll do is we'll start on the character manager script first of all. So let's close up OmniZombie Geo. Let's select our FPS controller rig and on our FPS controller rig of course we have the character manager script let's open that up in mono develop so the first variables we're going to need to add to our character manager class are going to be audio collection references we need two of them so that we can store references to those two audio collections we've just created the pain audio collection and the damage audio collection so I think I'm going to store these in their own little section underneath the regular inspector assigned variables I'll put a comment in there saying pain damage audio and the first one we're going to add is going to be a serialized field of type private audio collection I call this damage sounds and of course we set it to null originally here because we're going to hook this up via the inspector in a moment and then we need to add another audio collection almost exactly the same but of course we call this pain sounds instead the damage sounds and the pain sounds are going to be emitted using slightly different logic the damage sounds will always be emitted when a zombies collider first makes contact with our FPS controller rigs collider Currently, our AI damage triggers continually call the take damage function of the character manager in the on trigger stay function, which means for the entire time that the zombies collider is in contact with our FPS controller rig. Now, of course, we're not going to be wanting to play brand new damage sounds every single frame that these colliders are in contact. And we're going to extend this AI damage trigger class in a moment so that it only tells the take damage function to play the damage sound when the collider first comes into contact with the FPS controller's collider. And this makes sense, right? The rip and the bone breaking sound should only happen when the collider first comes into contact with you. But we also have no problem with multiple damage sounds overlapping. If a zombie is attacking us with a real quick combo of moves, it might be that the second trigger on the left hand hits you before the sound that was triggered from the right hand trigger has finished playing. And that's absolutely fine. If we were to break our arm and then a fraction of a second later break our leg, we would be able to hear two distinct snap and damage sounds. And because we're going to be playing these sounds using our one shot audio we automatically get that for free anyway right when we use the audio managers play one shot function if we do two damage sounds it won't matter if they overlap because different audio sources will be used from the pool so all we really need to do in our ai damage trigger is just make sure that we only request to play a damage sound in our take damage function when it's the first initial contact between a zombie collider or trigger and our fps controllers collider Pain sounds are slightly different though. We never want pain sounds to overlap because as human beings, we only have one set of vocal cords. Now we could say, for example, that we only want pain sounds to happen at that first point of contact, like we're gonna do with the damage sounds, but that doesn't really play in very well to when the zombie is feeding on us. If the zombie has hold of us and is feeding on us, it may be feeding on us for several seconds and we don't wanna be limited to only making one pain sound while that whole feeding procedure is playing out. But we don't wanna play another pain sound until the pain sound that was previously played has finished playing. So we're going to make sure that when we play a pain sound, we look what the current time is. We examine the clip we're just about to play. We get the duration of that clip and we add it to the current time. And that gives us the next time that we're going to be allowed to make a pain sound. Any requests from the AI damage trigger to the take damage function to play a pain sound will be ignored if the current time is not larger than the next time we've calculated that we're allowed to play a pain sound. So we're going to need to set some variables up for that. So the next one I'm going to set up is going to be a private flow. I've serialized it once again, and I've called this next pain sound time. And whenever we play a pain sound, we're going to examine the current time. We're going to fetch the duration of the pain sound, and we're going to add those two together to create the next pain sound. So that in the take damage function, if we get a request from the AI damage trigger to play another pain sound if this time hasn't been reached yet we ignore that request so what this means is in the case where a zombie is feeding on us for let's say 10 seconds if the pain sound was i don't know let's say two seconds long rather than have multiple pain sounds overlapping each other which would sound unnatural they will follow each other in serial so we'd have Ugh, ah, ugh 
while the zombie is feeding on us. So that's exactly what we want. And I'm going to set this to zero by default, of course, because when the game first starts, we don't have a next pain sound time. We haven't played any pain sounds yet. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is another variable, which is going to allow us to offset when the pain sound should happen, as opposed to when the damage sound should happen. Now, if our zombie's trigger enters our FPS controller's collider, we want to play the damage sound right away so that we hear the instant sound of damage being done to our body. Now, we could play the pain sound at the same time, but I found from playing around with this that it sounds much more natural if there's a small delay between the damage sound and the pain sound so that they don't happen both exactly at the same time, so that you hear a rip and then you hear a ah! after it. So I'm going to create another variable that once again is going to be serialized so that we can tweak this in the inspector. It's a private float and I'm going to call this pain sound offset and I'm going to set this to 0.35 about a third of a second. And whenever the take damage function gets a request to play a pain sound, and it plays that pain sound, it's going to use our audio manager's play one shot delayed function. That's a coroutine that will play the sound, but only after the time we passed it has elapsed. So we can just pass in the pain sound offset to that. Okay, so that's all the variables we need to add for now. Let's now scroll down to the take damage function and add two more parameters to the take damage function signature before it just took a single float called amount. I've now added a Boolean called do damage which means we wish it to play the damage sound, and another boolean called do pain, which means we wish it to play the pain sound. And of course, this function is called by our AI damage trigger uh, script, so we're going to need to adjust this code too, so that it now passes in these booleans and provides this function with the extra information that it needs. Uh, before we add the new lines of code to this function, there is something I want to tweak here, which is nothing to do with what we're talking about, which is our camera blood effect. Currently, we have the minimum blood amount set to 1 minus health at over 100. This means as we get more damage, the amount that the blood fades after an attack becomes less and less. At the moment, this is too much. It means that when we've got 10% health, the screen is almost entirely covered in blood and we can't see what we're doing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on the end of there, multiplied by 0 0.5, so that at most, once we've had a, a massive attack and our health has been really, really badly affected, although the screen will be covered in dense blood, it will fade back to a maximum of 50% of the maximum blood that can be on the screen because it's just no fun if the screen's entirely dark red and you can't see what you're doing. And this is how games normally work, right? If you're playing something like Call of Duty, you get shot, the screen goes red, and then it fades back to a certain amount. It doesn't always fade away completely. If you've got some damage, it fades back and there's still some blood left on the screen. And that's what this min blood amount is doing. I'm just making sure that I allow it to fade back a bit more, even when we're really heavily damaged. Okay, so with that tweaked, let's now add the new lines of the code that are going to listen to this do damage and do pain boolean. So we'll deal with the do damage boolean first of all, which tells this function, if it's true, that we wish to play a damage sound. So the first thing I'm going to do before we can play any sounds is check we have a valid reference to an audio manager in the scene. If we do, then it's time to see whether we can actually play a damage sound. So first of all, I check if the do damage boolean has been set to true. In other words, we've requested that this function play a damage sound. And I also check that we do have a valid reference to that damage sounds audio collection. Assuming that we do have a valid audio collection and we do wish to play a damage sound, I'm going to use the audio manager's play one shot sound. Of course, the first parameter is where we pass in the audio group that we wish it to be assigned to. I fetch that from our audio collection and we, we've already seen that I've set that to the player audio group. Next up, I pass in the audio clip. We can just use the audio collection's audio clip property to fetch a random audio clip from our damage sounds audio collection. Then then I pass in the position I'd wish the sound to be emitted from. I just pass in the position of our FPS controller. Next up, I pass in the volume that we'd like it to play at, which once again is fetched from our audio collection. The spatial blend is also fetched from our audio collection, and so too is the priority. And that's all of the code we need to play our damage sound. Now let's work on the pain sound. So first up, I'm going to check that we do have a request to play a pain sound, that that boolean is true, and that we've also got a valid reference to an audio collection of pain sounds. But this time, I'm also going to check that the next pain sound time is smaller than the current time. That means enough time has elapsed such that we are allowed to play another pain sound. So the first thing we need to do is fetch the audio clip from our pain sounds audio collection. So I create a local variable called pain clip and use the pain sounds audio collections audio clip property to get that 
that random clip. Next up, assuming we've been able to fetch a clip from the audio collection and it wasn't empty, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the new next pain sound time. And I do that by getting the length of the clip and adding it to the current time. So we know that after this clip that we're just about to play, we shouldn't play another pain sound until the current time has reached this time. Next up, we're going to call the audio managers play one shot sound delayed. And because that's a coroutine, we need to use the start coroutine function. So as you can see, I do start coroutine. I use the the audio managers play one shot sound delayed function and as you would expect I pass in the audio group I pass in that pain clip that we fetched up above I pass in the position of our rig I pass in the volume the spatial blend the offset and the priority all fetched directly from the pain sounds audio collection except the penultimate parameter there which is our pain sound offset this tells the play one shot sound delayed function how long to wait until it plays this sound and as we saw up above this is an inspector controlled variable that is currently set to about a third of a second so at the current settings what's going to happen is is the damage sound will play immediately and then after about a third of a second the pain sound will play and I've just noticed a copy and paste error there that shouldn't say damage sounds that should say pain sounds because this is the pain sounds audio collection and that's all of the code that we need to add to our character manager for this lesson that's going to deal with emitting damage and pain sounds but of course what we do need to do is we need to now add some code to our AI damage trigger script so that it calls the take damage function correctly telling that function when and when not to play pain and damage sounds so here we are now inside the AI damage trigger script and the first thing we need to do is add two serialized booleans that would allow us to configure on a per trigger basis whether we wish this type of trigger attack to do damage sounds and pain sounds because we won't want all attacks to create damage sounds. For example the feeding attack doesn't create a damage sound it just has a pain sound but our standard melee attacks they do. So let's first of all add a serialized boolean called do damage sound. We'll set both of these booleans to true by default and the second one is another boolean called do pain sound. So by default when we add an AI damage trigger script to a game object it's going to be set to do damage sounds and pain sounds and in a minute we'll go back in the editor and via the inspector we'll turn off the do damage sound boolean for our feeding attack. Feeding is much more of a subtle attack. We don't want to hear a or a bone break or anything like that because it's just teeth sinking into skin. Okay, so the next thing we're also going to need is we're going to need to detect when this trigger first enters our character's trigger. So we're going to create a private boolean called first contact, which will be set to false initially. And we're also going to need to implement the on trigger enter function so that we can detect that this is the first time the trigger's entered this contact and set the first contact to true for a single update. So we'll put that on trigger enter function just above the on trigger stay function. So the on trigger enter function is another one of Unity's magic functions that will be called automatically when this trigger enters any other trigger or collider. And the first thing we need to do is check we have a valid animator. You'll see why that's important in a moment and you'll notice that we also do the same check in the on trigger stay function because we need to only really record this state if we're in contact with the player and if the animation curve on this attack animation is returning a value that is essentially 1 or greater than 0 0.9 because we know that if it's not then although the trigger and the player may be in contact it's not at a hostile point in the animation. So next up we'll do a conditional to see if this is a valid first strike on the player. So first of all we'll check that the tag of the collider that we've hit is the player tag. Uh, if it's not the player then we don't want to worry about anything. And also we need to check with the animator using its get float function to see if the curve on this attack animation is set to one. And if that is the case remember parameter hash here is something that we actually type in in the inspector and it's either set to left hand, right hand or mouth. It's the name of the parameter in the animator and also the name of the curve that we've added to it that tells this animation when it should be doing damage and when it shouldn't be. And like I said, assuming that we've hit the player and we should be doing damage to the player, then we set first contact to true. That's our on trigger enter function done. Now let's go down to the on trigger stay function and scroll down to the bottom where we call the take damage function and let's add the two extra boolean parameters. The first one is whether or not we wish a damage sound to be played by the take damage function. That's easy. We simply have to do an and between whether we wish to do damage and also if this is the first contact. 
And you'll see in a moment that at the very bottom of the on trigger stay function, we will reset the first contact Boolean back to false. So this Boolean will only be set to true and this test will only be set to true the very first time the zombie's trigger hits the character's trigger and also if this script has been configured to do a damage sound. And as the final parameter, we simply pass in the do pain sound Boolean. And finally, at the bottom of this function, we just want to reset the first contact Boolean back to false so that this second parameter to the take damage function will never evaluate to true again until this particular trigger has left contact with the character and has then remade contact again in a separate animation or within a separate combo move within that animation. And that should be our AI damage trigger function complete. So let me save that off, go back to the editor and see if we have any errors. And we don't. So the first thing we'll do is with the FPS controller rig selected, we need to hook up the references to the damage and the pain audio collections. So I'm going to drill down into my audio collections folder. I'm going to drag the player damage audio collection and drop that in the relevant slot in the character managers inspector. And I'm also going to do the same for the player pain audio collection, dropping that in the pain sounds property in the inspector. So our character manager now has access to the two audio collections that it needs. I've also just noticed that next pain sound time, I serialized it. I shouldn't really be serializing. This is something that's controlled internally by the script. But I'm going to leave it serialized at the moment because while testing, whether it's working or not, we'll be able to see the next pain sound being set. And that could be quite useful. So what we need to do now is we need to drill down into Zombie Geo and we need to find the three AI damage trigger objects. So the first one is the mouth. So let's find her mouth trigger. And let's turn off do damage sound. Feeding is not going to do a damage sound. It's just going to do a pain sound. I'm just going to check, even though we shouldn't need to change anything here, that if I drill down into her spine two and then into her left shoulder, her left arm, her left forearm and her hand, um, you can see that do damage sound and do pain sound are both set to true. And that is actually how we want it. The default is perfectly OK for those types of melee attacks. I'm just going to select the right hand and check that they've also been set as well. So I should be able to play this now. Uh, but what I am going to do before I press play is I'm going to go through all our audio collections I'm going to set them all back now to be 3D sound. So I'm going to set all their spatial blends up to one. I'm going to do that for all the zombie ones as well. I only had them down on zero so that while we were testing, we didn't need to be right next to the zombie to hear it doing its thing. But those days are gone. Okay, so nearly there. Remember, putting the spatial blend up to one means that everything will now be properly 3D attenuated. I also made an error, actually, at the beginning of this lesson. When I created the player damage and the player pain sounds, I did actually say, I believe, I'm going to make this a 3D sound by setting spatial blend down to zero. When, of course, that made it a 2D sound, not a 3D sound. So uh, we need all of the spatial blends now on all our audio collections to be one. And I'm going to press play now, and I'm going to cross my fingers and see what happens. So you can see now, you can hear the zombie in the background. And our first step she moves. Let's put the flashlight on her, get her to come and attack us. I probably need to turn down that scream chance as well, I forgot. So let's... Yeah, it works. I could probably turn up the sound of the player pain a little bit. We did put it down to a not player pain, sorry, the player damage audio collection. We did set it down to like 0 0.07, which is an incredibly quiet sound. So I'm going to kind of double that. I'll put it up to like 0 0.14. And I'm also going to select Zombie Jill and put a screaming chance all the way back down from 1 down to like, I think we had it at 0 0.05, something like that. That'll do. I'm also going to press apply this to apply all this to a prefab because we've done lots of changes to zombie geo so let's press play again see how that works out let me maximize this push her away and there you see Works perfectly. 
Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for this lesson. This has been a nice quick one, but we now have our character rig making all of the correct damage reaction sounds in response to an attack. But what I want to do is set you some homework now so that you can get used to doing everything that we've looked at over the last four or five lessons. Now, you will remember that we created several animation controllers for our zombies. At the moment, all of the changes we've made have been to the one Jill's using, which is Omni Zombie 1. But going back many lessons ago, we created three other zombies controllers that could be used to swap out some of the motion fields so that we had a variety of animations between our zombies. Now obviously those controllers have had none of the audio collection player scripts added to them, none of the AI layered audio sources added to them and of course they also contain animations that we haven't added footstep curves to and things like that. So I want you to do that between now and the next lesson. Now when I come back at the next lesson I will have upgraded these zombie controllers so that you'll be able to download the project at the start of the next lesson and all of the zombies will be updated Dated, but it really is pointless me recording myself going back and setting up all of those controllers with all of their audio collections, all of their layered audio sources and all of their um, animation curves. Now the way that I'm going to do it is rather than call up each of these zombie controllers and then go through each one and add all of the scripts uh, for the audio collection and the layered audio source, I'm actually just going to delete these three controllers. I'm going to duplicate Omni Zombie 1 three times so that I now have four controllers that are exactly the same. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re-swap out the various motion fields that I changed because most of the motion fields stay exactly the same. It's really just the core locomotion ones that changed and maybe in two of the controllers I think we used a different screaming animation. We used the short scream instead of the long scream. So it's much, much quicker to duplicate Omni Zombie 1 which has all of these audio collection players and layered audio audio sources on them and then just swap out the motion fields. We can leave all of that stuff pretty much the same, all of the scripts the same on all of the states and the layers. The only thing you have to remember to do is that when you find a new animation for say zombie walk and you swap that out, you must remember to also add an animation curve to that animation so that it correctly sends in a footstep requests on com channel one. Another thing you need to make sure you do is obviously if you're using any animations that are pre-baked, you'll have to create a custom animation curve for those. But I'm going to do all of that offline. So before you watch the next lesson, you'll be able to download a new version of the project that will have all of the zombie controllers updated and I will have re-prefabbed all of my zombies using those zombie controllers and all of our zombies will be ready to drag and drop into the level as fully functioning and sound emitting zombies. Okay guys, so thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.